हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई सी अकेडमी इन दिस लेक्चर लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड सैंपलिंग प्रोसेस फर्स्ट लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड सैंपलिंग थियरम सैंपलिंग थियरम स्टेट्स दैट एनी कंटिन्यूअस टाइम सिग्नल कैन बी कंप्लीटली रिप्रेजेंटेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ सैंपल्स एंड रिकवर्ड बैक If the sampling frequency is greater than or equal to twice the highest frequency component of base band signal, so we can perform sampling on a continuous time signal if the sampling frequency is greater than or equal to twice that of the highest frequency component of base band signal. If the base band signal is having only one frequency. instead of multiple frequencies at that case we can write fs should be greater than or equal to 2 fm so fm is the frequency of base band signal or it is the frequency of modulating signal if in a base band signal we are having multiple frequencies in those multiple frequencies we will choose the highest frequency and we will state that the sampling frequency should be greater than or equal to twice that of the highest frequency component that is present in the base band signal now let us consider a signal g of t and let us consider the periodic impulse strain s delta of t this signal g of t is sampled using the periodic impulse strain to obtain the sampled output which is g s of t that will be equal to g of t into s delta of t so this figure shows the example of sampling of signal g of t so this represents a continuous time signal g of t and figure b represents the periodic signal which is an impulse train so when the signal g of t is sampled using this periodic signal will obtain the signal g s of t which is the sampled signal this is one of the example of sampling of continuous time signal therefore we can write the sampled output signal can be written as g delta of t which is the sampled signal that will be equal to g of t multiplied with s delta of t let us call this as equation number 1 let s delta of t be the periodic impulse strain which means it is having the impulse signal at specific interval of time so it is known as periodic impulse train therefore we can write s delta of t is equal to summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity delta of t minus n t s let us call this as equation number 2 so equation 2 represents periodic impulse train if we put equation 2 in equation number 1 we'll get g delta of t is equal to g of t multiplied with summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity delta of t minus n t s let us use the shifting property of impulse function which states that g of t into delta of t minus n t s can be written as g of n t s multiplied with delta of t minus n t s so using this property we can write the above equation as g delta of t is equal to summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity g n t s into delta of t minus n t s let us call this as equation number 3 so what we have done in this equation g of t is taken inside the summation so at that case 
summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity g of t multiplied with delta of t minus n t s we can write it as g of n t s into delta of t minus n t s so that is what it is written in equation number 3 for frequency domain let us consider g delta of t is equal to g of t multiplied with s delta of t if we take Fourier transform on both sides we will get g delta of f will be equal to g of f convoluted with s delta of f so here multiplication in time domain is convolution in frequency domain and vice versa that's why this time domain signal is represented in the form of convolution in frequency domain here s delta of f will be equal to fs summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity delta of f minus n fs let us call this as equation number 5 let us consider this as equation number 4 so let us substitute equation number 5 in equation number 4 so let us put equation 5 in equation number 4 therefore g delta of f will be equal to g of f convoluted with fs summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity delta of f minus n f s from convolution property of impulse function we can write g of f convoluted with delta of f minus n f s we can write it as g of f minus n f s therefore we can write the above equation as g delta of f is equal to f s summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity g of f minus n f s let us call this as equation number 6 equation 6 can be rewritten as g delta of f is equal to f s g of s plus f s summation of n is equal to minus infinity to infinity n not equal to 0 g of f minus n f s so what we have done in equation number 3 we have taken the term g of f outside the summation and we have written the, the remaining values so g of f will be at n is equal to 0 that's why in this equation we have not considered n is equal to 0 we are considering other values for n because for n is equal to 0 we will get the value as g of f let us call this as equation number 7 now when g delta of f is passed through a low pass filter then in equation number 7 this second term is a high frequency component that's why only the low frequency component is allowed and the high frequency component will be eliminated so the second term will be eliminated therefore g delta of f will be equal to f s g of f therefore from this we can write g of f is equal to 1 by f s into g delta of f here f s is equal to 2 w let us consider this as equation number 8 so g of f is the signal in frequency domain and if we convert g of f in time domain we can obtain the original signal g of t so what we have done we have sampled the signal g of t and that sample signal g of t is recovered back from the frequency domain signal now let us understand correct sampling under sampling and over sampling when sampling frequency is equal to 2w then this type of sampling is known as correct sampling here 
there will be no effect of aliasing. When the sampling frequency is less than 2 W, such type of sampling is known as undersampling. Here, the signals are overlapped with each other and the region where the signals are overlapped, we will call this as the aliasing effect. And if the sampling frequency is greater than 2 W, such type of sampling is known as oversampling where there will be a spacing between the signal samples. So this space is known as guard band. Here there will be no effect of aliasing. This is about sampling process. Hope you have understood the topic. Thank you.